Hello, hello. Today we are talking about reusable blocks and the Gutenberg editor. If you aren't using Gutenberg yet, now is a perfect time to begin. This is a brand new website, no content on it really. I have a few drafts that I've been working on, but nothing major. The only thing I've done is add the Gutenberg advanced plugin. Let's see, what is it called? The only thing I've done is add the ultimate add-ons for Gutenberg, but that isn't something you absolutely have to do. I just like it. We're going to go into a post and I'm just going to show you a few things to get you used to the Gutenberg Blocks Editor. To get a new block, you can either type the slash and then type in the name of a block, uh, or you can use this little drop down. Whenever you first get started, you're not going to know which blocks there are. <laughs> so there's not really a reason to use this slash, but once you get used to it and you use just a few of the blocks over and over again, that's going to help you out tremendously. Like if you want to add an image, you would just type image. Uh, there's a post grid, media and text. You can also type this asterisk and it will start a bulleted list for you. Or you can type two hashtags and you will get a heading. Alternately, you can create a heading by pressing the plus button, type your heading here, and then right here, this is a little paragraph icon, you just change that to heading and then h2, h3, h4, etc. Now if you want to add a reusable block, that's really where the magic starts to happen. You click these three little dots and the option down here says add to reusable block. So what you do is you create the block that you want to do first and then you add it to the reusable blocks. So for example on one of my recipe sites I have an affiliate uh, reusable block. Actually you know what let me just go show you. Alright I'm just going to show you some of the reusable blocks here. Since that's a new website uh, it's going to be way too much work to show you that way. <laughs> okay, you go down here to browse all, and then you're going to see all the different blocks, and then it kind of gives you an example right here too of what it's going to look like. And then you have blocks, patterns, or reusable. So reusable blocks is what I'm talking about. I have tons of different ones in here. The main one that we use is actually for eye track bites. And we have a few of them. So there's two different ones. There's this one. And then there is this one. So I use both of these in most of the posts. Um, this is something that changes from time to time though. So well, what's great about reusable blocks is that you can edit them. And if you click edit, and you edit it this way, that's going to edit it globally, which means if you have this block in 100 different posts, it's going to edit it in all 100 posts. This is probably the reason I switched to Gutenberg. I was a die-hard classic editor fan. I refused to switch to Gutenberg, and then someone told me that you could do a block like this and change it globally, and oh my goodness, my world was changed. If you're an old school blogger like I am, you remember having to go in and change your forms or your opt-ins or whatever you put at the bottom of your posts on each post. I remember one time I was changing my opt-ins and I had to change it on like 120 posts. It was ridiculous. So this block alone, just the fact that you can use a reusable block and edit it globally, that alone is worth using the Gutenberg editor. <laughs> if you don't want to edit it globally, if you just want to edit it in this post, you just click convert to regular block. And then you can edit it here, but it does not get edited everywhere else. Uh, same thing with this one. I love that this can be changed globally because this changes all the time. They change the structure of the program, all of that stuff. So. It's absolutely beautiful to be able to do it. And one way I like to use these is with affiliate links. If you have an affiliate link that you use in a lot of different posts, make it a reusable block. So sample reusable block 
blah, blah, blah. And then we're going to do the three dots and it's going to say add to reusable blocks. You can title it, so blah sample. And then if I wanted to add this to another post, I could do that easily. We're going to go ahead and remove that block. My most used blocks are the following. Let's see. Columns, and then this is part of the plugin I told you guys about. This is advanced columns. I'm not going to cover that here because I don't want you to feel like you have to add another plugin. Uh, columns, you can do a full width. You could do two. You can do them uneven to the right or to the left. I usually use the three right here. And then it's so awesome. You can add images, you can add paragraphs, you can add lists, you can add whatever you want to these three things and they're gonna line up side by side. Again, if you're an old school blogger, you probably remember having to do the TR, TD, you know, making your table from scratch and then one little line was messed up and the whole thing was just bad. <laughs> what else did I write down here? Image and text. So I use the media and text sometimes. You put an image over here and then you write text over here. I can actually show you an example of this on one of my other sites. I have a post in the works. One of the ways that you can use the media and text, I'm going to show you the front end and the back end. So the front end, this is how the post looks. This is the media and then this is the text. I alternated these back and forth, uh, but again, this is not done <laughs> by a long shot. Um, but this is what it looks like in the back end. To create this, I just added a media and text block, uploaded an image, and then added text to the side. And right here, it lets you alternate so you can change it and have the image on the left or the right. I liked it going back and forth. It kind of seemed a little bit easier for the eye and uh, easier to get more pins. With this type of post, I probably would make it full width. Uh, there's not a lot of room for text because my sidebar is so huge, uh, but I still like how they go back and forth. And if you want to delete a block and you don't see this, you can just hit the backspace twice. Another block I love to use is called Table of Contents. This is a block that does come with the plugin, but it is extremely helpful. And then a block that is native inside Gutenberg is the Yoast FAQ. I use this one a lot too. Ask a question, answer a question, and you can add an image or you can just keep adding more and more questions. Because you do need to include an affiliate disclosure anytime you use affiliate links, Another great use for these blocks would be to write up your affiliate disclosure and add it to each blog post. And then if for some reason it changes, then you can go in and edit one of them and it will be edited globally. If you want to get an idea of all of the blocks that are offered with the ultimate add-ons for Gutenberg, you can just click on settings and then UAG and then there's an entire list right here that shows you what is available, you can deactivate any of them. Like if you will just never use Google Maps, deactivate it. Uh, I do like the how-to schema, the FAQ block, it's got schema too, so that's awesome. Uh, there are some that I just would never use, so I would deactivate those, that's okay. But you can activate them all or deactivate them all as well. You can even import blocks from other websites. So if you have a bunch of websites and you use some of the same blocks over and over again, you can import and export them in Gutenberg, which is nice. If you have any questions at all about Gutenberg blocks, leave them in the comments below and I will make sure to answer them as soon as I can. Good luck and have fun!